So, I'm not a relationship expert by any means. I'm no matchmaker, no love consultant, no romance counselor. I'm just a person with admittedly a very limited amount of experience when it comes to the field of being in a relationship. But if I were to contextualize this a bit, we are in high school, and many people will agree that most of us will either have gotten a desire for, been in one, or have broken off something that resembles a relationship. That said, many people would agree that there's just too many people going against the struggle of that one special development in the high school romance. See, a kiss is an interesting matter. Some people find it in really high regard when it comes to a relationship. Other people think a lot less of it. Today we're going to be mostly examining that former situation, an earnestly meant kiss in an average relationship setting, and more importantly, how to or how not to do it. That said, let's go. With phase one, setting the mood. See, as I'm sure we're all painfully aware, having a couple kiss in the middle of a hallway, a staircase, or location that otherwise has way too many people moving through it is just an obstruction. and. A very not pretty sight at that. Yes, this is high school. Yes, this is where emotions and hormones probably run very high. But please be smart with where you choose to do things. If you're not doing anything special, then yes, I'd say that you probably have a lot of free reign when it comes to how you do your public displays of affection. If you're going beyond the occasional kiss on the cheek, then I'd recommend a place of seclusion. If you're not going to a place devoid of most random people, then at least go somewhere where people don't care. I don't know a lot of partners that would appreciate a kiss on either on the crowded or theatrical side of things. That said, I can only get reminded of my first kiss. That would put the timeline back into middle school. I'd been with my girlfriend for a steady pace for around a year, and we we didn't have any set boundaries, but we were careful not to go beyond a handhold or a quick peck. But as time went on, people got scared, and we eventually came to the conclusion to have our first kiss on graduation day. Truth be told, it seemed like a good idea. People were all in fancy getup, it was a very emotional event, and at one point, the organ player was even putting on some fitting music for the occasion. But then there's pressure. The hall had our entire graduating class, our parents, our teachers, photographer, and even the local clergy and priests. Needless to say, there was a lot of pressure on that moment, and it led to what ended up being our first and worst kiss. See, there's, there's a time and a place for a kiss. It's not something you do just anywhere, and just don't do it in appropriate places. If you're in a classroom, an office, please keep in mind where you are. That said, you know what to do for there. A past location, the other aspects are just moot. Having music can set ambiance and be a good inclusion, but having sweet, sweet music outside in public areas is not something you'll find often. From there, setting the mood is something you have to do. And with that, let's get one step closer to the act with phase two. Be prepared. Oh, I may or may not have sounded like a Boy Scout during that, so let's just move along from this slide very quickly. Just put yourself in the shoes of someone in a situation that may or may not escalate into a kiss. Just, you might have thought of a few aspects that you may or may not want during that. So, here's a small checklist of things to keep in mind when you're doing it. Breath. Is it alright? You do not. Lips. Are they chapped? Especially unpleasant on the nerves. Teeth, is there anything stuck in them? I have stories about that. And finally, ill, are you? I'd rather go through a mediocre kiss than one that ends with me being bedridden for the next three days. Yeah. Just keep those in mind and you should be good leading up to it. And from there, we're on to phase three, the do. The act of the act of me describing how to physically lock your lips with another person is probably something best left me not saying and you not hearing. So I'm just going to tell you to do what the situation calls for. 
do what seems comfortable, and just keep in mind another small list of pointers. Don't jump straight in for the kiss. Yes, in some situations it may be okay. Say, meeting at an airport or a reunion after a long time. But more often than not, a kiss is something best built up to. Eye contact is probably the most common way to help establish a mood for that. Holding hands is something you shouldn't skip out on either. From there, I can only suggest you experiment and see what works with you and your partner. From there, other stuff. While the kiss is probably the focus of a kiss, there are other things to do throughout that. You have arms. You can use them, and hugging is a very pleasant feeling. Yeah. Remember the mood. See, if, the, if we're talking about the example of a first kiss, then you probably want to keep a more serious tone while going about this. If you're more comfortable with your partner and it's a very casual light mood, then finding yourself giggling or laughing throughout may be a very good sign then. Just, you built this mood, try to work to maintain it. And I did say to remember the mood, and that is a very important part, but remember that the most important parts of a kiss are the two people actually going out through it. Okay, this is a very short disclaimer. I do not have a lot of experience in this field, and I can just say, if you are going to do this, keep in mind where your tongue goes, and keep in mind that you do not need to be a dog. That's about it. Thanks. Thank you.